I'm here to talk about the Micro Story series VR Ignettes, which is a very interesting way of pronouncing V square bracket, bracket R square bracket I G N E double T E S. Think of it as if you took the word vignettes and inserted R to create VR in the word. Uh, originally, this artwork wasn't titled VR in Yets. It was called A Million and Two. And this is because originally the artwork was conceived to be a set of VR vignettes that you could experience as actual environmental game spaces. Um, through an examination of what was best for the actual content of each micro story. It was decided that accessibility was more of an issue than trying to develop a form that would be kind of whistles and bells based and be very um, spectacular in terms of its presentation. Instead, I decided to go for something that would display on uh, mobile devices, PCs, Macs, uh, basically across a range uh, of headsets, VR headsets, and other platforms. So this is what uh, kind of guided the work. Initially, there were going to be quite a few more micro stories making up the series, but as you'll soon see, the um, series itself isn't fixed. In the introduction that um, prefaces the works on the website, I actually give a brief introduction about the uh, format of the work. And this is what I call narrative smearing. And I'll just read a bit from the actual description. Narrative smearing is where traditional story techniques are truncated and mutated into smears what I call kinetic actions and mechanics, collage-like layered building blocks, visual distortions, dual-tiered text annotations, which require a reader to make active choices in order to navigate each microstory space or story box. Story box was a, a term that I came up with because each of the stories is actually hosted on Sketchfab, which is an online platform um, that hosts 3D and VR sculptures or models. Now, this is the first work uh, that was created in the series called In the Skin of the Gloam. And I'll just go through um, each of the works to give a, uh, the stories to give a brief um, overview and run through of, of them. Now, obviously, um, Due to time constraints, we can't go in depth into each micro story. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just bump up the audio so we have a sense of the actual soundtrack behind the work. That could be a little bit too loud there. So we'll just reduce it a bit. Now, each story bo box, as you can see, because it is hosted on Sketchfab, it actually has the title in the uppermost left-hand corner. Um, there's a set of tools to each story box that you can use that changes the way that an audience member or viewer can actually experience the work. So, if you select the annotation bar down here, you can actually go through the text component of the work sequentially. So if I select the first annotation, what happens is there's a zoom in and you see the, the first line of the, the first story. So this line is Gloam. Her bones like teeth, needling and chattery, chittery, rivets in her skin, ratcheting or hatcheting. So, as you go through each work, you have the option to actually, and I'll show you here, you can hide the annotations, you can start autopilot, which will actually take a manual playthrough of the work, so you don't actually have to have any click-throughs, and it reduces the interactive 
aspect of the work, but it kind of plays out like a VR film. And you also have here the actual index titles for each storyline. So that itself almost reads like a poem. And that was obviously intentional. So if we continue working through the annotations, we can see that it moves slowly around the 3D or VR model. Now this work itself, and I'm just using the mouse here, I'm on a desktop computer, to scroll in and out. So you can actually manipulate if you're viewing it as a 3D work, the scale and the scope of the model. So you can move it up, you can look at it from different angles, as I said you can scale it and it's all set against a static backdrop. Now if we actually look at the way this series is presented We'll have a very quick look at the other micro stories as we go. When I refer to narrative smearing, racking in the upper bubble is a good work to display this and also another one that we'll get to. So if we basically start the annotations here, you can see that there are options that you can use that will really give you a different take on the narrative. If you concentrate on, say, the background text rather as opposed to working through the annotations. You can see, especially through here, that the text becomes more readable in some spots and less readable in others. So as we're going through the annotations, say here we can read partial sections of the text but not the whole lot. So displayed, display, dregs and dreamlike, sociopaths, focus, shipped, speaking. There's not an actual way of reading the entire background text there, but if you actually manipulate the 3D model by shifting it in the story box space, you can. So there are options that you can have. It's almost like a cross between um, a visual art approach where you can can look at it but also you can manipulate it through interactive and immersive actions. Another work that um, is part of this story series is the Thing Tableau. Now this work is interesting because it operates as a discrete poem and there's no index lines to this. This is all told through the main annotation bar. But there's an aspect here that you look at the models and it becomes much more of a poetic rendering of an event. And again, you're able to move the model, manipulate it, and you can even turn off the annotations as I've described and if you do that what happens is you can still read the text at the bottom but the annotations themselves on the actual model are removed so again it gives you a different version of the work. The next work Accension takes this kind of visual distortion or meaning absorption even further so if we start the annotations here I'll actually bump up the volume as well you can see that the actual 3D model itself is, is shifting through the work and is actually even removed entirely and that is actually the static backdrop mirrored from the actual model itself. Okay, now I haven't talked about the VR option but you can obviously view these works in VR, in VR, sorry, and this is the way that the works are intended to be viewed. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to capture the VR version um, in video, so 
basically hopefully uh, those of you with a VR headset will choose this option and if you if you do view it in VR it's a completely different experience again so this is the actual last work and this work is a much more gentle work I guess you'd call it um, the story is again very heavily poetically based I think that's probably about my time done um, I hope you enjoy the work and thank you very much for having uh, me and for watching this artist talk.